April 2023, and these models are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. GPT-4 estimated to be a trillion parameters. It's six times larger than GPT-3. What's happening as these models get bigger? I'm talking today about achievements unlocked. You might have heard a buzzword about emergent abilities, which is just a technical term. It's been around since the 1970s to describe all sorts of behavior within different models and not just models in artificial intelligence, but models in physics or biology or economics or computer science. Consider anthills and termite mounds here in Australia that can grow several meters high from these tiny little creatures that are a millimeter or two across. That's an example of emergence of this scaling up as things get bigger we're getting new behavior that was unexpected that is just being documented for the first time another example is the sun and we can feel the effects from this massive ball of fire i've created a new visualization and i've documented it based a lot upon the work of dr jason way at google he's done some fascinating literature review of the emergent behavior in these models, particularly based on the Big Bench, which is the Beyond the Imitation Game benchmark by Google, and the MMLU, both of those pretty big in terms of making sure that we can actually document beyond a particular ceiling level what's happening in these AI models. Let's step through. I've documented four different sizes here, small, medium, large, and extra large models. Let's start with the small, which might be something like GPT-3 13B. This one was unreleased. It's a whole lot bigger than Curie, but it's not as big as DaVinci. And also Palm 8B by Google. We're seeing as achievements unlocked at this small stage, things like emergent arithmetic. When it was not taught how to do maths, it was able to be stepped through how to do very basic operations at this small level, and that gets better and better as these models get larger. Code debugging, the ability to go through and find what's wrong in a particular piece of code, and very basic comprehension, maybe at a grade one level, these models can actually read and understand. Moving right along to the media models, this is gonna include GPT-3 DaVinci, and to a certain extent, ChatGPT. I've put Lambda in here at 137 billion parameters, Palm's kind of medium model at 64 billion parameters, and Chinchilla 7B, given its scaling, is the equivalent of a lot larger model. So we start here with linguistics puzzles from the Big Bench. The ability to convert movie titles into emojis, which is kind of fun. GRE comprehension, so we're moving up there with its ability to play around with comprehension at different grade levels. Metaphor understanding, physical intuition and understanding of the world. And then logical deduction starts showing up as an achievement unlocked at this medium level GPT-3 size. Let's move up to the large size now. This includes Google Palm. 540B and the massive DeepMind Chinchilla 70B, which is the equivalent of a much, much, much larger model. And they were uncovering some really cool things that came out of these large size models. First one here, geometric shapes, understanding of shapes and geometry. Proverbs in different languages. The phonetic alphabet, we start testing here the pronunciation of different parts of our English language. Elementary math, you'll see here we've progressed from modified arithmetic and we're actually able to do math at a much more advanced level. Once again, these models were not taught how to do math and somehow they've gone and learned what the operators mean, what happens on both sides of the equal sign, and they've learned a lot about numbers, especially at this large level. Causal judgment might be stepping through causation and maybe correlation and code line description was found in Google Palm. Here's where we get to the super fun stuff, and we're still gonna be uncovering what's possible with GPT-4 for a number of years. We don't even have access to it yet. The API is just the chat interface, it's very limited as to what you can do, but we do know about some of the capabilities from the different papers that have analyzed it 
from the hidden end, Microsoft's paper in particular, is pretty revealing about its capabilities. So both GPT-4 here at the extra large level, and I've also just estimated what might be possible with Gemini, which is the project that combines Google and DeepMind, brings together their PhDs, brings together their compute budget, and allows them to train a one trillion parameter model very similar to GPT-4. Let's jump in. We start with college level exams. You've seen what GPT-4 can do here, scoring in the top 10% in the SAT and several other exams, including medicine and law. You'll note here that this was just not possible with GPT-3. It was getting decent scores on subsets of the SAT, like the analogies subset, but it wasn't able to do exams in any subject and get very high scores paper on reflection with a slightly different spelling where the GPT-4 model is able to self-critique its own answers and actually up its accuracy by analyzing and then modifying its own results. App building, lots of documentation on this, how GPT-4 is able to generate both code and then entire files and directories for the creation of apps. Spatial reasoning for GPT-4, Similar to DeepMind Flamingo, it's able to see the world. You're able to send it photos, so it's got more of an understanding of how objects fit within space. Advanced creativity, we're still uncovering what it's able to do here. They've tokenized both ChatGPT and GPT-4, allowing it to actually rhyme, which is an interesting example of creativity. And I've put in here at the end, embodiment options. We've seen Microsoft do this with ChatGPT, We've seen Google do this with Palm, but I think GPT-4 just gives us a lot more options for embodiment, particularly with seeing the world and being able to make decisions. That's it, that's the models we know so far. I have put one little extra line down the bottom here called next, and all of these are essentially guesses or predictions or hypotheses. Here's the first one, grounding the ability to know what is fact and what is not fact. I think the truthfulness rating is gonna go sky high with GPT-5 or whatever is next, and the ability for it to critique and reflect and make sure that it is telling the truth. Long horizon planning. This is something that OpenAI and Microsoft have spelt out as something to look for, not just in the realm of power seeking, but also in the ability to plan long term. Persuasion, we saw this a little bit with GPT-4 testing. They couldn't get it to go too far, but it was an interesting experiment and I'll see more of this in GPT-5. Advanced embodiment, we'll definitely see this with the new 1X investment by OpenAI and the Neo robot. Awareness, this one's controversial, but I'm gonna leave it in because we've got people like Professor David Chalmers talking about this. Marvin Minsky and Alan Turing were talking about this back in the 50s and 60s. And last week, even Professor Jeffrey Hinton said, how can we be so sure that these things are not sentient? So for all of these experts to go on record about this, I thought, let's put it in there. Such an incredible and interesting concept, emergent abilities, things that we wouldn't expect to come from these large language models as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, we discover these unexpected achievements that have been unlocked. Thanks so much to Dr. Jason Way at Google who provided literature reviews. He found 137 emergent abilities. I've just consolidated these down to something that's more accessible. If you've stayed this long through the video, I've got a gift just for you. It's never been released before you get to watch it for the first time. Recall that many years ago, I was an expert in the research field of very high intelligence, gifted education, high performance, specializing in prodigies. I worked as chairman for one of the nerd organizations where I had oversight of 54 different countries and the families within them and how they would actually raise a child that could do very outrageous things that had achievements unlocked or emergent abilities at a very young age. This is a book from 2017. It's a picture book that I wrote very quickly in a matter of minutes and then took quite a while for my illustrator to illustrate it beautifully. You're gonna to get to see it now with an AI voice behind it. The AI voice is by Narakeet.com. The child's 
name, the AI child's name is Tara with an Australian accent. The book's called People Like Me and I want you to consider how our large language models right now are progressing in some ways like a child prodigy. We're seeing these emergent behaviours that shouldn't exist but as we scale up, and it might be scaling up the brain or the capabilities in a prodigy, we're seeing some really cool stuff being unlocked. People like me, thanks for joining me. See you soon. People Like Me by Alan D. Thompson Illustrated by Judith Willings This book is based on true stories of real people. This book is for you. Adam is one year old. He is curious about the world. He has taught himself how to read the newspaper. He loves reading so much that he does it as often as he can, even when the words are new to him. Isabel is two years old. She thinks that dinosaurs and other creatures are incredible. She is learning a lot about each dinosaur, including their Latin names. Grace is three. She likes to memorize numbers. She already knows the first 31 digits in the mathematical number called pi. She can say them out loud. Roshni is four years old. She loves language and talking with adults. She has taught herself to type on a keyboard. She writes her own letters to her grandparents in Singapore. It is a little bit slow and sometimes her fingers hurt from typing. She enjoys using new words and improving her sentences. Carl is five. He wants to know more about many things and loves asking questions. He is especially interested in geography and astronomy. He knows the names of every country on Earth. He also knows the names of many galaxies in the universe. He reads every day learning more and more. Alma is six years old. She loves playing the violin and piano. She is in the middle of composing her first opera. It is about a beautiful fairy tale. Alma hears the music playing in her head. Sometimes she hears the music in her dreams. Sometimes she hears it in her mind while she is spinning her skipping rope around her head. Then she has to work hard to write the music down and make it fit together. James is seven. Engineering and physics are his favorite subjects. He loves building things with his hands. When he designs a long bridge, sometimes his model breaks or falls down. James picks up the pieces and tries again. Sometimes taller. Sometimes stronger sometimes in a new way. Tristan is eight. He loves writing code to create software. He also loves maths. His first program looks simple, but it was hard to write. It can calculate and display prime numbers. When Tristan's software displays an error, he has to find it and fix it. His software programs are getting better and better. Nicholas is nine. He sees new inventions in things around him. He likes nature and machines. For fun, Nicholas designed a new type of motor using bugs attached to a windmill. He wants to continue to discover and invent new things for future generations. Clara just turned 10. She loves science, especially chemistry. She also spends a lot of time playing and having fun. While she was playing with ball and stick models in science class, she discovered a new molecule. It is called tetranitrotoxicarbon. I'm unique, but I'm not alone. There are other people who think like me. There are other people who love learning like me. There are other people with advanced brains, just like me. I listen and make them my friends. I play with them in the park. I share with them in groups. I can find some of them in my school. 
Some of them are older. Some of them look different. Some of them live very far away. I seek them out. I find them because I know they are there. Creating things. Making mistakes. Finding solutions. Living life. Sometimes I have to look extra hard. But they are there. People like me.